Yes. Hello and welcome to Bible Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. We're so excited to have each and every one of you join in with us today. Pastor Scott has an amazing message entitled Stop the Steal. Um, we just ask that you keep all your phones and other devices on mute just to avoid any background noises. If you are to be asked a question by Pastor Scott, we just ask that you mute, unmute yourself, then remute once answered. Lastly, Bible is a fully accredited charitable organization under the United States Code 501c3. If you desire to leave a monetary donation and the, to help those less fortunate, you can do so by going to our website at www.intlword.net. This will allow you to leave your online donation. Um, lastly, but without further ado, I'll hand this portion over to Minister Dion for our opening prayer. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, all right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for yet another lesson, Lord. Father, I pray that you just carry Pastor Scott through this lesson and that you just speak through him, Lord. And I pray that you just meet us all exactly where we're at. Uh, Father, I pray that you just continue to move and work in the miraculous ways that you continue to each and every week. Um, also, in knowing that these uh, these lessons are uh, in, a, in a way, like a reflection of, you know, what we're going to see this week. So, Father, I pray that we just carry these lessons in our hearts, Lord, and uh, we walk through these situations as they walk through, um, you know, in the Bible, and that we just walk through these situations in faith, and that we just continue to have our faith grow each and every day. We continue to make time to spend time with you each and every day. And, um, Father, we're just thankful for you. I'm thankful for this group that we call Bible. Pray that it just continues to grow. And I just pray that we can just continue to uh, spread your love into this world, Lord. But, Father, we're just thankful and grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have our praise reports. I have uh, Minister Emmanuel. He is thankful for a loving, supportive, and caring family who will actually be in town with us this week. So that is super exciting. Uh, myself, I am thankful um, just for another year. Um, I did have my birthday last week and um, also just blessed with peace that I don't understand at all sometimes. <laughs> so I'm thanking God for that. I have Minister Dion and Sister Shade. Um, God is blessing them on all sides and continuing to open doors in Dion's career. Um, God kept one of their family members safe during an accident. Um, so they are thankful for that. We're all thankful for that. Um, God is also continuing to um, bless their family and others around them as well. And then I have Pastor Scott. Um, he was charged for a month of electricity at his old place of residence and realized that they failed to cancel his service when he uh, moved into his new place of res residence. Um, he was actually reimbursed uh, over $100. So he just wants to thank the Lord for bringing back what the enemy tried to steal. And this is my favorite part. He did say his prayer was to stop the steal. <laughs> and God did just that. <laughs> so praise God for that. And I will pass it over to Elder Angel Barrett. Hello, everyone. Praise God for each and every one of you. With joyful hearts, we warmly welcome you to Bible Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. We are in for a treat today through an enlightening and impactful message entitled, Stop the Steal. Have you ever experienced the pain of having some, something precious stolen by someone you trusted? This week's message will delve into the ways the devil cunningly places people in our lives to undermine our faith and trust in God's word. You'll be shocked and stunned to discover how the enemy distorts God's truth into lies, all while appearing pious. Today, Pastor Scott issues a clarion call to believers to remain vigilant and prayerful, guarding against the enemy's schemes to steal what is most precious. This powerful message will not only expose the devil's deceptive tactics, but also emphasize the importance of being discerning about whom we trust. Pastor Scott will remind us to inspect what we expect from those around us, reinforcing our need for spiritual vigilance. This unforgettable session promises to deepen your understanding and resolve. So as we study together, allow the Lord to strengthen your faith and trust in his holy word. Now, without any further delay, prepare our hearts to hear what the Spirit is saying to us through our anointed leader, Pastor Tiarchit Scott. 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Each and every one of you for, first of all, for just coming out and hearing what the spirit has to say, because I want you to know there are times that um, when I'm speaking, I'm speaking out of my studies and I'm speaking out of the things that I'm aware of. But there are times when I am speaking that the Holy Spirit, who knows everything, the Bible says the beginning from the end, he becomes the speaker. And when he becomes the speaker, he gives us what is called enlightenment. In other words, it's, we get good understanding of the word of God. And my objective today is to be able to share with you what things are taking place and are soon to come uh, on our horizon. What I do want you to know is this before we even get started. Don't ever back up on God. Don't ever back up on God. It doesn't matter what you've gone through or what you're going through. Maybe you may have made a mistake. Maybe not. Maybe things just seem like they're not coming together for you. But I assure you, God is still on the throne and he have not lost any power and he has all power. And if we realize that God is like that, we have nothing to fear as children of God. What we have to do, the only thing we need to fear is our own thoughts, our own uh, abilities to look at things distorted, our own uh, ways to get in between or get ahead of God. So as, uh, uh, as you've heard me say in times past, our problems are no bigger than whose hands we put them in. So let's keep them in God's hand. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you all who already have played a part. Uh, Ministry Emmanuel doing the sound checks and everything and those wonderful graphics. I love watching. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I don't know what graphics he's going to use, but I'll sit there and kind of wait. But when, when's the graphics going to come out? Because they're always such a blessing to me to see his creativity and how God gives them to put together those graphics. So I love that. Uh, we have another graphic, up-and-coming graphic designer, uh, speaker, uh, preacher, elder, reverend, uh, elder Angel Barrett. She's been doing some fabulous graphics, and that's another one. I'm over here. I'm trying to send her more quotes. Make sure you quote something today, you know. But I thank and praise God uh, for her and the gifting God's given her. I thank and praise God for Minister Dion being, uh, he is such a timely and a trustworthy and a consistent young man of God. He really is. I don't have to ask him, hey, you know, you're going to post a memory verse today. You're going to do this. Gonna do... He just goes and does it because he realizes it. If he doesn't do it, it won't get done. So thank you, Minister Dion, for always doing an excellent job as the Sunday school superintendent and actually getting uh, those things out about Bible. I appreciate that. Then we have the personality extraordinaire, Sister Tanya. You say, well, why? You're going through everybody who's doing something. Why not? Uh, what's your rush? I wonder if I was talking about you, uh, would you say slow down? But again, we have Sister Tanya, and that's her right there, with her head to the side. And she does such an excellent job with the actual testimonies and praise testimony she puts together with the schedule she always every saturday morning sometimes even friday this week all right now she asked me and want to make sure that we have who's going to do what and that's called organization she's a very organized person when it comes down to dealing with god's business and i have never had asked her so tell you're going to put out oh uh, who's going to do what just as soon as you said it <laughs> Oh, my bad. So we thank her for her diligence. I want to thank also Sister Shade Finley, who is the actual welcomer, welcomer. She can actually get in there. And Sister Shade will welcome people. And like she said today, she's done it so much. I can practically remember it. And you know what? She can. And she does an outstanding job. And you see her hair flowing like she's just a model. So yes, we really appreciate and thank God for her. Thank God for my dear friend, Elder Brian Barrett. You might say, well, he's still going. Yes, I'm going. This is all a part of the lesson. Uh, Elder Brian Barrett, he's just a prayer warrior. 
And he's what you call a silent majority. And here's what I mean by that. He may not talk much that you all may hear, but when he talks to God, God listens. And when I say silent majority, he doesn't have to talk. If you talk more on your knees than you do on your feet, I want you to know there's more of you than there are of us because God will be on your side. So I want to, like I said, thank everybody. Thank all the other people who come out. It's always good to see uh, none other than... Um, I'm on the phone. Yeah, you are. <laughs> we all heard that. I'm on the phone. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> That's all good. Good to see you, Sister Leslie. Also, as I was saying, so good to see, uh, I call her Mother, uh, Mother, um, well, actually, she's Evangelist Williams, so I call her Evangelist Williams, and always good to see her. Sometimes if I close my eyes and just look at the teeth, she let her and her daughter look the same smile. So we thank God for them, and we thank God for all of you. Um, we got uh, Brother Gabriel, or Gabriel uh, on, uh, Sister Jaden, so good to see you, Sister Lorelai. So good to see you. And so let's get into the lesson. And the reason why I started this way is because I want you to see it doesn't hurt to edify people. It doesn't hurt to encourage people. If you can continually encourage people, it will keep the devil many times from discouraging them. Most church hurts come from people that were hurt by church people. But if we can build people up and encourage and make them feel wanted and make them feel uh, welcome, I want you to know it makes a difference. So we thank God for all of you. So let's go and get into this lesson today. And the actual title of the lesson today is called Stop the Steal. Let me see by a show of hands, anybody, if you've heard this terminology before, let me see your hands. Stop the Steal. Okay, we got a few people. All right. All right. Elder Angel Bear, when you heard that that term, stop the steal, uh, what is that? What what is that? I don't want you to go into it, but what, what do you think the, the people are saying? Stop the steal. Because normally they people don't say it like that. But what do you think they're saying? That something valuable or very important is being stolen and some and a whole bunch of us are going to get cheated. Mm hmm. Very good. Excellent. Uh, Ministry Emmanuel, I saw your hand. What does that mean to you about stop the steal? What does that mean? I don't want you to go into the whole thing, but just what does that terminology mean? Stop the steal. Yeah. Um, to prevent theft, uh, like uh, through the mitigation of theft or fraud. Mm hmm. Very good. Excellent. The reason why I asked who has heard of this is because I want you all to know something. If you don't um, take the time to watch the news and listen to what is going on, you are neglecting your responsibility. You are. Because don't ever think that Jesus did not know exactly what was going on. He knew what was going on with Herod. He knew what was going on with Pontius Pilate. He knew things that were going on in government. He knew exactly what was going on. And I don't want you to uh, uh, misunderstand me, but it is very important what you hear. Don't ever think that, you know what, I just don't want to pay any attention to any of that. But let me ask you this here. If you're saying you don't want to pay any attention to anything going on with the politics or anything like that, it's like a person saying, I don't want to hear what's going on with the weather. I'll just go outside and dress whatever I want. We don't do that with weather. So why not do that with what's invaluable or what is valuable in your life? The decisions that are made in our government will actually determine certain rights that you have and what rights you do not have. But if you passively let it go by and don't address it and don't find out what's going on, you uh, are doing a disservice to yourself and especially as a child of God. Let me just say this. The another question comes up. Well, how do I know who to listen to? How do I know what news to listen to or what news branch to listen to? 
this is what I'll say to you. Contact me after uh, after Bible study. I'll tell you exactly who to listen to. If you can trust me as your pastor with your soul, then you should be able to trust me with showing you and telling you what, what newscasts you need to listen to. Because there are a lot of newscasts out here that are lying deliberately. And a lot of people are being sent into perdition. In other words, they're being set up to go to hell. And if you don't watch it, you'll be one of those people who, I just don't know what to do. I don't know who to vote for. I don't know what's going on in my government. I don't know anything going on with anything. And that's not good. It's not. So it's just like you do on your job. I guarantee you, all right, no, okay, I'm just going to prove some little points here. And now I'm not talking about anybody that I ask a question to. I'm just asking a certain question. Uh, Sister Shay, would you be able to tell, or do you know the people who are good workers at your job and who are not? Yes, sir. And what is it that you notice about those that are not good workers? Um... They may complain a lot, or they maybe are late to work, or, you know, they Those slack off in different ways. Yeah, um, that's good. I don't yeah. want you to say all the answers. Good golly. Yeah. We, we, we observe, because a lot of those people, they will complain a lot. She said they don't come and work on time. Uh, um, Evangelist Williams, what other type of traits do uh, bad employees or bad uh, bosses at, at the job have? Their 15-minute break is 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're told on half of us already. <laughs> they um, say they didn't get their assignment done because of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. E excellent. Yeah. People, people are funny. They'll do all kinds of things. We have an HR manager here. As an HR manager, human resources, you have to manage resources of humans. What type of things do people do, Sister Tanya, to, uh, to show that they are not uh, honorable in the job that they do? Uh, basically, what everybody else said. But, um, yeah, either don't show up to work, don't show up on time, um want special favors blame other people they're never accountable you know they're always you know pushing it off on somebody else mm -hmm. um yeah and and basically everything else that that was said they just they don't want to do their job they don't want to do what they're supposed to do absolutely and then think about it here's something that i find really peculiar have you ever had people that are dishonest and those same dishonest people say they hate people that are dishonest. What kind of people are those? Uh, Elder Angel Barrett, you ever had people that are dishonest and then they say they can't stand people not being honest? Yes. How, how, how do they act? Uh, just very hypocritical because they'll turn right around and be dishonest. Mm hmm That's right. I always watch people who want to complain about others, but they can never see themselves. Uh, Elder Brian Bear, are you familiar with the terminology narcissism? Yes. What does that mean to you? If you hear about someone that's a narcissist, what does that mean to you? Uh, to, mean that, to me, that would mean that they're, as an individual, thinks about themselves a lot, uh, unaware of the needs or uh, or anything about anybody else. It's just Absolutely. themselves and what they want and how they feel comes first. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing, all of you for sharing that. Emmanuel, uh, have you ever dealt with a narcissist? And then give me what kind of traits they have. Uh, yes, sir. Um, they have a false sense of entitlement. Um, very self-absorbed um lack of accountability they do use a lot of deflection or whatever putting off on you what's really mirroring them mm. um yeah just uh really toxic people to be around wow and if you're not careful like you know they can um persuade you to kind of take up and pick up some of those characteristic traits as well absolutely absolutely thank you so much thank you uh, elder brian barrett 
He both hit it just like I said on the nail. These are people that are self-absorbed and with themselves so that everything is about them. It's not about other people. It's not about helping other people. It's about their own piousness because they want to be exalted in front of people. And those same people who are thieves, they all sound like, oh, you know what? I don't like people stealing from me. I don't like people doing anything wrong to me. And they themselves are the ones that are doing it. So when we're talking about stop the steal, a lot of this is about stealing God's glory, about stealing what God gives to other people. Let me tell you this. The reason why I try to utilize each and every one of you, because I really do choose to use you, and God really does want to use you, but he can't use you if you don't make yourself available. God wants to use you, but he can't use you if you don't make yourself available. What does that mean to you, Sister Tanya? Um, it just means that, you know, you have to have that availability and want to be able to do those things because how, yeah, how can you use anything or how can he use you? I mean, it's just like thinking about like, I don't know if you're going to go and use a broom, you know, or something like that. Like you have to be there to use it or it's not going to sweep up your floor. So yeah. you have to put, you know, put yourself into it. You better watch out, Sister Tanya. You're getting a little more wiser now. You're getting wiser to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah, it doesn't just sweep its own self. You got to make yourself applicable. God does not use lazy people. I'll say that again. God does not use lazy people because he wants in everything that we do, we to do it as heartily as unto the Lord. He wants us to act just like we were doing it for the Lord. That's how he wants us to do. That means with our job or anything that we do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Today, I was uh, in church, uh, my other service, I was in church and this individual had given me this money because I was purchasing these ties for these men. And when he gave me this money, I took the money and everything. And so I was like, okay, I'll make sure he gets a tie and this person. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me of something. He said, do you remember this man five years ago and you didn't have any money and that man gave you $25? I said, yes. He said, give that man a tie back. You pay for his tie for him. Good idea, good idea, Lord. Sometimes we forget to keep our eyes open to be a blessing to people. Just because God is blessing you, it could mean that he wants you also to bless someone else. Sometimes we forget and we have struggles. When I say we, I'm referring to myself also because I just use myself as an example. Sometimes we forget God uses people to bless us, so he wants us to be a blessing to people. Bible says it like this, give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. It is not that we give to actually be seen, but we should be seen giving. Does that make sense? Not that we should give to be seen, but we should be seen giving because our God is a great giver. So today I'm going to be coming out of the book of 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, and I'm going to go into this, this story. And while I go into this, I want you all to say, look, look at it from this aspect. What I'm teaching on, the Bible says the Old Testament and the things that were written in the Bible were written for our learning. And there is nothing new under the sun, nothing new. So what has happened in the Old Testament or what has happened before, it is happening even now. And I want you all to be keenly aware of what's going on in this Bible story. And I pray that God will translate it to you where we are even now. So in 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, I'm going to be getting at verse number six through nine. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass, uh, and it came to me, and 
it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities, and the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and was at that saying, to me, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have but, excuse me, what can he have more? but the kingdom. And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. My God. Let me give you a little bit of background because I think it's only good that you understand what is taking place uh, at this time and why we hear stories like this because it's going to be a reflection of things even today like I shared with you. Now, at this time, let me go a little bit back. Before there were any kings of Israel, God appointed judges. And these judges were to judge over any of the affairs of the people, whether they were big or small affairs. Some of the judges that we hear about, like one of them we know about off the top of our head was Samson. Another judge was Samuel. They would judge over the people. Well, at this time, what was taking place just a few uh, chapters uh, before this one is Samuel, who was the judge. He was the last judge. Samuel was became old. And we, when he became old, he could no longer function in that position as a judge. Side note, sometimes you have to know when you have, you have gone beyond being able to function in a particular job or particular thing you may do. So Samuel is old, and normally his children, his, his, he had two sons, they would normally be the ones to be his predecessors to come after him. But the problem is Samuel's sons, they were thieves. They were liars. They were connivers, and they were in the church. So they did not want to have Samuel's sons, so the people came together. And when the people came together, now this is in 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 7. They said, we want us a king that we can see. And God told them, I'll be your king because I'm your God. And they said, no, we don't want you to be our king. We want you to stay and be our God. We want a king that we can see, someone that can correct us, someone that will lead over us, that we'll be able to see, and they'd be tangible. And they went to Samuel about it, who is the prophet, who is also the judge at the same time. And Samuel, being like a true child of God should be, he immediately went and sought the Lord. Mr. Emmanuel, why do you think Samuel went and sought the Lord before he made any decision on what the people wanted? Because who better to give you a sense of direction, a clear sense of direction than God? Absolutely. Don't ever make big decisions. Don't ever make quick uh, decisions out of big situations. You want to seek the Lord. I will never get mad at anyone who tells me, well, I'm going to make sure I seek the Lord. That's, that's what we should do. We should make sure we're seeking the Lord first. Because if you don't seek the Lord, it is very easy because the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto men, but the ending thereof is destruction. Our mind has a way of lying to us. And I want you to know something about lies. Lies, if they are told enough, they can disguise themselves as the truth. What do you think I mean by that, Elder Brian Barrett? Lies that are told, if they're told enough, same lie. It can, it can sometimes disguise itself as being the truth. Oh, my gosh. That happens all the time. Uh, just a continual 
scenario about something or someone, if you hear it enough, uh, you'll believe it without even looking at the facts. And normally yeah. the real truth comes out later on. Here's one for you. And thank you, sir, for sharing that ministry manual. Now, the angel, you might want to get this one. Faith comes by hearing, and so does a lie. Mm. Faith comes by hearing, and so does a lie. If you hear the word of God enough, it will build your faith up. It will build you. It will encourage you. It will strengthen you. It will make you feel, you know what? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You know, it'll make me feel like, you know what? No weapon formed against me will prosper. Why? Because I'm hearing and it's building up my faith. But if you hear a lie, the Bible says this, if you believe a lie, you shall be damned. That means if you believe a lie so much and you continue to believe it, it will send you to hell. We'll have faith in a lie. And that's why if you don't watch out, you'll hear these enemies, these liars, especially as the Bible says in these last days, the Bible says there will be liars, uh, men waiting in, in, uh, in wait to be able to deceive people. There'll be scoffers. There'll be mockers. You, you see all these things happening even now. And if you don't watch it, you will start listening to this stuff. And then you know, you'll start believing. Because it's saying so real. It couldn't be a lie because they keep on saying it. I want you to know the devil is wise. The devil knows, you know, and let me tell you why the devil fights us so much. It's because he once had position. And because of his lies, he lost his position. And God took not only his position, but God also took his body that he was lusting over. The Bible said that Satan was over, or Lucifer, which is the same uh, individual. He was an archangel. He was over all the temple and dance, over all the music ministry in heaven. And the Bible said the angels are innumerable. He actually was over a third. He had a third of the authority of all the angels. And the Bible said that he lied to them. He made them believe that if they would just do what he said, that they would be able to take over the kingdom of God. When you talk about a, a rebellion, when you talk about a coup, when you talk about taking over a kingdom, they literally, Satan had to believe that if they would uh, go in cahoots with him, they would actually be able to take over the kingdom of God. Not only that, but Satan lied so well to them he told them that I'm going to build my kingdom in the northern skies of heaven above the kingdom of God. Let me say this side. Don't ever forget who made you. Don't ever forget it's the Lord that causes us to gain wealth. It's the Lord that is the one that blesses us. It's the Lord that is fighting our battles. It's the Lord who ever liveth to make intercessions for us. Don't ever get to a point where you think it's you and you're smart and you're so clever that you can be able to take care and watch over yourself. I want you to know, dear sir and dear madam, the devil already has a foot in your door. So what happened is he didn't cause this rebellion of all these third of these angels. And the Bible said, because Jesus said he was right there. And when God, the father, kicked Satan out of heaven, Jesus said, I saw the whole thing. Now, if Jesus was God, the father, he wouldn't have said, I saw the whole thing. He would have said, I did it. He didn't do that. God, the father, exclusively kicked Satan out of heaven. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. If you ever want someone to give you uh, a question or a historic question, what was the shortest war ever fought in the history of the Bible? You can say it was the day Satan rebelled against God and it was over just like lightning. It's like somebody said, all right, forward, march. And as fast as he said, march, it was over. It's done. And you know, I see God like this. Light work. 
this person that was trying to take over all of heaven. But I want you to know, I told you that not only did he dethrone him from his position as an archangel, he took his authority, but not only that, he took his body. He took his physical body. Angels have physical bodies, if you didn't know. They can be seen. If you saw an angel, you'd be able to see it. The thing is, is that with a physical body, because the Bible said that when God made Satan, when he made Lucifer, he made him with such beauty that he was arrayed in all the most finest jewelry and the finest uh, uh, materials ever made. And when Satan began looking at himself, he got exalted. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm asking this question. And I asked Elder Brian Baird, who gave us that understanding about narcissism, and same thing with Mr. Emmanuel, who gave us that understanding, because a narcissist is not, a, they are not capable of seeing their flaws. All they look for is more and more praise to be heaped upon themselves. So here was Satan cast down to earth. And just like he was cast down, his objective is to raise people up and get them exalted because he knows eventually they're going to be cast down also. But I'm going to tell you this about misery. Uh, Elder, um, Elder Williams, uh, do you know the scripture where it says about misery loves? What is misery love? Company. Company. Misery is like a little kid who wants to play with everybody. Yet they're inside the house and can't come out. They may even be on punishment. But they still want everybody to be able to come and play with them. So even if they can't go outside, they'll play with you through the windshield so that they can look at you from out their window and they can still be acting up and trying to play because they want company so bad. I want you to know when people are miserable, they want company because misery breeds misery. When people are miserable, they want you miserable too. They can't stand to see you happy. Let's look at this story. So what happens is the last judge was Samuel. And then the people came to Samuel and said, Samuel, we want, we want a king that we can see. And Samuel went and prayed and said, Lord, the people are rebellion. They are wanting to have a, a, a king that they can see. And I told them that you, you, you're their God. You'll be their king. And they want a, they want a man they can see. And God says to, to Samuel, give it to them. What? Give them what they want. Sometimes God will give you something that you really say you really want, but you haven't counted the cost. You haven't thought it out thoroughly. You haven't had it vetted thoroughly. And when you haven't had it vetted thoroughly, it's easy to say you want this and you want that. Anybody can say that. But some things, and I've learned this, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I said, Lord, I only want what you want for me. I only want what you want for me. Lord, if this thing is not for me, and Lord, if you're not in this, in this. Lord, if you're not in this, if you're not in this with me, if, if you're not, this is not your mind, if this is not what you really want for me, I don't want it, Lord. I want you to end this, E-N-D. If you're not in, I end this, E-N-D, in this. Because if you get what God doesn't want, it will always lead to failure. And here's the thing. Anything that God gives you, you should treasure that for the rest of your life or until it's not there anymore. Have you noticed of late that in these days, People are so self-centered that even though they can be blessed with a gift, they won't even use it. They won't even, it came from God. Anything that you have. And how we know people are self-centered with things like that is how they in they how they actually uh, interact with their gift, how they interact with what God has given them. And I'm gonna just say it to you like this. When people become content, it shows. 
Remember this statement, and it's an old one. It's not a Bible scripture, but it's a good statement. And the Bible, not Bible, but the statement uh, really goes, and let me just say it like this so I don't get caught up on this statement here. If you have anything that is of worth, then it's worth staying with. It is. A lot of people get cheated out of a lot of things. So what happens is God tells Samuel, give them what they want. Let the people choose who they want. Imagine people are going to choose who they want as a king. They don't want God as a king. They're going to choose what they want. So, okay, let's go for some attributes. Minister Dion, if you were to pick a person for a king, uh, how they would look. Uh, give me uh, one description of how you want the king to look. Um, he'd probably be he probably be muscular, like uh, a okay. stronger looking guy, tougher looking guy. Okay, muscular. Okay, that sounds good. Um, Sister Tanya, how would you like a king to look? Smart. Smart. Look, he looks smart. All right. Sure. Elder Angel Barrett. Yes, sir. Um, I would want them to be to look. physically strong. Okay. They look physically strong. Okay. Mother Williams? We know that they're brave and courageous. Okay. Brave and courageous. Oh, these are good. Things. Elder Brian Barrett? Um, I would say, like, really, really tall. Really tall. Okay. Very good. All these are great attributes. Sister Lefsey, I don't know if you can uh, unmute yourself or not, so I don't want to embarrass you, but if you want... Okay. I'm on you. Okay, good. How would you Integ think you want a king to look like? Integrity. Very good. I, I think integrity means more to me than anything else. Good. That's very good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we want whoever that is to be a king or want to be over us. We want them to have those looks that they're actually like, like Sister Leslie said, integrity. We want them to have like, make sure that they are strong or it's, I heard somebody say muscular. Yeah. So they looked around the entire kingdom and they saw that there was one man that was taller than all the rest of them. They saw there was one man that was built stronger than all the rest of them. They saw there was one man who seemed to be wiser than the rest of them. And they said, you know what? We want to have this man, our king, and that man's name was Saul. Let me tell you something about Saul. When Saul was first um, starting out, Saul had realized that one day, because his, his family, they owned farm animals, uh, his father had lost a donkey. And without his father even had to tell him, Saul went out to find his donkey, and he went from village to village, place to place, to find this donkey for his father because he loved what his father loved. And when they finally came to a place where they found out where this donkey was, not only while he was there, but there was another prophet that was there. That prophet's name was Samuel. And God told and told uh, uh, Samuel that there is this man that these people are looking at and this man that they are looking at, his name was Saul. And because the people said, we really enjoy him, this man Saul even used to prophesy under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So they were like, oh, yeah, we know this is the one we really want. But let me just say this, not everyone who starts out right ends up right. And if God already told them in advance, let me be your king because you're going to choose somebody. This is what God told them. You'll choose somebody that might not be to my liking. Won't have the heart that I really want. So they said, well, I know this man's got to be. So they chose Saul. So Saul became the king. And Saul was leading the children of Israel after certain battles and having victory over certain battles. The Bible says that in 1 Samuel, the actual, uh, this was uh, 15 verses 1 through 19, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 through 19, that God told Saul, I want you to go and kill out these, uh, kill off these people. They're called the Amalekites. 
And these Amalekites were ferocious enemies of God and had killed many of God's people and they did it mercifully. And so God wanted to have them destroyed. And he told Saul, he said, Saul, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to destroy these Amalekites. I mean, I want you to kill them from their king, men, women, boys, girls, even sucklings. Kill them, kill their oxen, kill their donkeys, kill their animals. I don't want anything to be left that even resembled them. I want you to destroy them and utterly destroy them off the face of the earth. And Saul said, I'll do this. But there was something that Saul was hiding from within. Don't you know, you can be a person to be saying, I praise God and I love God and I, I enjoy the things of God. And there could be a root of evilness in you. And you know what? Most of the time, we don't even try to bring it out. We don't even realize we have certain things. Listen, just because certain people or people don't do a certain sins, it doesn't mean because they love God. It could be they just haven't had opportunity to. I'll say that again. Just because a person's not sinning doesn't mean that they don't have it in them too. It could be they just don't have opportunity. And if you give them opportunity, that's when they'll sin. Years ago, when I was working loss prevention management, we would have uh, cameras everywhere in our retail stores. So then people would come in the store and they didn't want to uh, just look at anybody and say, oh, that person looks like they're going to steal or that person looks like they're a thief. Some of the biggest thieves in the world, some of the people who steal the most things in the world are dressed up like millionaires. Doesn't look like they, they need a dime. And those will be the people who will come in there. What, what regular thieves do, they'll try to steal things off a shelf. What, what, what big time thieves do, they'll steal things that have monetary wealth in stocks, bonds, finances, things that are, have bigger wealth, credit card fraud, these type of, of things. Back to the story. So Saul had lust in him for money. That was his weakness. When money, this is how to tell if money is your weakness. If money is your weakness, the last thing you want to do is give to anything for God. That's just a way of telling. If money is really your weakness, the last thing you want to do, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do a lot of teaching on tithes and offering, even though you should tithe. You should give your offering. Because be for real, there are people that are hurting. And not only just because people are hurting, it's a way of showing that, Lord, I appreciate what you're doing in my life. There are people that are here right now in Bible that tithe and they, they, they give offerings and everything. And I already know they're going to be blessed and are being blessed by the Lord. I already know it. Can't fool me because the Bible says if you give, it shall come back to you. The Bible says that if you do tithe, God said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of. I'm going to make sure that your, your fruit won't cast his vine before, it, uh, before it's time. God will always bless givers. My problem is, is that the same people who, the people who don't give, they want the same blessing as the people who do give. And I'm, I'm letting you know right now, that's impossible. It's impossible. It's like, how in the world do you expect to have a, a serve a God that is a giver and then you're not a giver and you want all the blessings that he has? Back to the story. So what happens is Saul decides, I'm not killing all these people. I'm not killing all these animals. I'm not killing all this. This is what I'm going to do. Saul says he gets with his leaders. And I'm going to tell you this about evil people. Evil people establish evil leaders under them. They do. And if the leader is a liar, the people will be a liar. The Bible says like priests, like people. Reason why I'm saying you all this is because I have a reason to be very proud of each and every one of you. I do. And the reason I say that is because I know, and you should know, especially for those in the Bible, you've been in Bible over three and a half years, almost three and a half years, the Bible's been existing. 
You don't have a pastor that's in everybody's newspaper. He's lying. He's cheating on people. He's fornicating. He's out there cussing people out. You don't hear no evil reports. And if you do, it's because somebody lying. It's the Lord keeping me. One thing I remember uh, my son, Mr. Emmanuel, came to me one day and I was talking about getting in a relationship. And he said to me, he said, Dad, you know, I, hey, I respect you want to get in a relationship. I respect that. But Dad, just keep your guards up. We don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose you. That meant everything to me. He didn't say, oh, you know, dad, I want, boy, I want you to do what you got to do. You know, to handle your business, dad. You do that. No, he wanted me to live saved and stay saved no matter what and who I was dealing with. And I believe that it is the Lord that hears your prayers just like he hears my prayers. And you should always be praying for your pastor. That's the truth. Because I'm always praying for you. So what happens is, even though Saul is a leader, he begins putting together an entire cabinet of evil people around him. Saul has three sons. Two of his sons that he had were very, very evil. Saul has his sons talking and thinking like he does. So what happens is he goes and keeps the actual king. He doesn't kill the king. He said, I'm going to use the king as ransom. Then he goes and lets uh, the women alive. He lets the women stay alive so his men would have entertainment. Hint, hint. He not only does that, but he goes and makes sure that all their livestock, he doesn't kill them off. He keeps his livestock also. And the reason he keeps all them alive is because he wants to make himself become more and more wealth. And he also spoils the actual goods of these actual enemies. God said, don't even keep their gold. Don't keep their riches. Don't keep nothing from them. I don't want you to have to deal nothing with them. And Saul decided to do it anyway. Just because it seemed like you got away with something doesn't mean God forgot about it. Sometimes God could just be giving us time to get right. If you're doing wrong, God expects you to repent and get right. So what happens is God sends Samuel to see Saul. Samuel is the prophet. And when Samuel goes and sees Saul, he hears the sound of sheep. He hears the sound of the oxen. He hears the sound of all these animals. And he goes into this meeting where Saul is having, and he sees the king of these Amalekites. And he's like, wait a second, Amalekites. He said, wait a second. Saul, did not God tell you that he wants you to destroy him? And Saul was like, yeah, but um, I got these. I got these things I'm doing for God. I got more animals to do offerings. I got more animals to sacrifice. I got, and God tells him, don't you know that is being disobedient? And God hates rebellion. This is where that statement comes from. Rebellion is as a sin as witchcraft. Saul was rebellious against what God asked him to do. And so Samuel says, just like you've done this, Saul. You're, for this, you're forsaking your own soul. And then Saul gives Samuel a fake repentance. Have you ever heard of a fake repentance? Elder Angel Bear, what does a fake repentance sound? A fake repentance. It's an insincere apology. Um after especially after you were caught you didn't you didn't confess before mm -hmm. everybody saw the video you yeah. confessed after and, and after. it wasn't sincere you didn't go to the person you hurt and, mm. and tell them i'm sorry and change your ways absolutely saul repented or apologized to samuel but not to god and because he did it half-heartedly god wasn't accepting it anyway I'll never forget my, my number one favorite repentance that I heard. And uh, Minister Emmanuel, uh, he always uh, reminded me of, of this. There would be a person that would repent. And this is how they repent. I'm sorry you feel that way. That was their repentance. I'm sorry you feel that way. So they're hearing themselves say, I'm sorry. But to add on to the 
the, the injury, to add insult to injury, I'm sorry, you feel that way. They're not sorry about what they did. And they were a very evil person. Very evil. So here, Saul goes and does this little fake apology. And Samuel, who normally would say, the Lord forgives you, keeps walking. He's walking out of the place. Before Samuel leaves the place, he does what Saul was commanded to do. He kills the actual king Achan and uh, Agag, who was over the um, Amalekites. And then he goes to destroy all the things that God said that need to be killed. Now, he goes and cries. It hurts Samuel. Don't ever think that if you got a true man of God or a woman of God that is your leader, don't ever think that it makes them feel good to see you suffering. Some of you all, I will be crying and praying for, and you won't even know it. And then the devil will tell you, don't come to Pastor Scott. Don't come to him. Because he's going to be so mean, mad. He's going to be mean. He's not going to understand what you're dealing with. And it's a lie from the devil. Because when I met you, we weren't all that now. Even when I started, I went all that. So don't let the devil cheat you out of your blessings. Saul now doesn't understand that he is, because of his sins and his fake obedience, he's about to lose everything he has. So as Samuel was walking away, Saul grabs him by his garment and rips it. And then Samuel tells Saul, the words he just did not want to hear. And he said, even as you rip my clothing, so does the Lord rip his kingdom away from you. He said he will find someone better than you to serve him as king over his people. And the Bible says in the process of time, God sent Samuel to David. David was just a little young, ruddy teenager. He goes to the house of David and God said, Samuel, I want you to anoint him as king. And Samuel's like, but Lord, Saul's still alive. He said, I know. Anoint David as king, even though he's a little boy, even though he doesn't have much learning, even though he doesn't have, but what he does have is a heart after me, a heart for me. Can you tell when people have a heart towards God, they don't make excuses to leave or do anything other than they want to make sure that they're doing what God wants them to do. That's how you can tell when a person has a heart for God. The Bible says that what happens is David, David, who was anointed to be the next king, he had to carry himself more wisely than all the other people. And that same David, we find out just a little while later, is the one who killed off Goliath. Not only did he kill off Goliath, but he was appointed to be the captains of the armies of Israel. Who appointed him? Saul. And Saul is getting victory after victory after victory. And when God is given victory, you should be happy. Thank God is somebody that's making you look good. Listen, you don't have to be the one to do everything. If everything is running together, we are all being blessed together. We're all in the same family. And if God is using you, it's blessing me. If God is blessing me or using me, it should be blessing you. We're all as one. But if it's jealousy there, the Bible said there's every root or there's every type of sin being pressed, processed. Watch this. So now as David is winning all these battles, he comes home from winning this battle of the Philistines, as we read from the beginning. And when David comes home, he's looking to see Saul happy because Saul has been happy over all the victories. So as he goes and embraces Saul, as he goes and, and, and is showing Saul how he got this victory, Saul hears these women singing. David had, I mean, Saul had killed thousands, but David had killed tens of thousands. And when Saul heard the women singing his praises, the Bible said he hated what they said. He got distraught and he wanted to kill David. The Bible says he began from that day to I, David. And David started realizing that Saul had another spirit. The Bible says that the day that, that, that David was anointed to be king, 
the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then the Bible says at that same day that the Holy Spirit left King Saul. Just because you have don't mean you can have. Just because you had don't mean you can have unless you stay in the right standing with God. Last part I'm going to share. So David now realizes Saul has an evil spirit. Saul hates him. Have you ever been hated for, by somebody for no reason that you've done nothing? It's a horrible feeling. And when people hate you for no reason, it makes you feel, what did I do? What's wrong? I can't understand that. And it's really not you. It's because who is dwelling in you? If you're a child of God, I want you to know the, the Bible says, Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you also. So Saul was so angry with David that he tried to kill David over 21 times. He tried to have David killed over 21 times and chased David everywhere throughout the kingdom. Imagine being anointed king and then you're being chased by the devil everywhere. And I want you to know, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. Just because God is blessing you doesn't mean that the devil's not eyeing you. A lot of times I can tell people's growth by how the devil is eyeing them, by how the devil is trying to get upset. Sometimes some of the fights that you all may see and may encounter, especially fights in a relationship, it could be husband and wife, it could be mother and daughter or father and son. And whatever these relationship problems are, a lot of it is because the devil's eyeing you because he's seeing so much potential and he wants to get into whoever is closest to you to make you feel off balance. Because he knows that a false balance is an abomination to God. He knows that if you don't, if you get to that point where you realize that God is on your side, you will fight him on your knees. The problem with most people is they don't want to fight in prayer. They want to fight with fist fight. I don't know why, but when we get distraught with each other or with other people, the very first thing that should come to your mind is we need to pray. We need to pray. I don't care how long you've been in this, 50 years. If you got problems and there's issues that come up, we need to pray right then and there. Let's drop everything and let's pray sincerely unto God. And he that heareth in secret shall reward you openly. The Bible said God gave, gave David two times to kill Saul, but he told Saul, he told David, don't touch my anointed and do my prophet no harm. He told David, don't even kill Saul. Even though Saul's trying to kill you, and even though you love Saul, don't want you to touch him. Here's a thought real quick. What do you do when you are so much, you love a person so much, and that same person hates you with the same vigor that you're loving them? They're trying to kill you. They're trying to destroy you. They're trying to hurt you. And yet you can't hurt them. You can't destroy them. You can't do anything because God is saying, I want you to love them even as I've loved you. So David did not do anything to Saul. In 1 Samuel, the 31st chapter, a very sad thing took place. Saul, who was out to kill David, was in this battle. And his battle was another big battle against these Philistines. The Bible said that the Philistines had the upper hand on Saul in so much that they actually wounded Saul. Saul's sons went with him. Jonathan was killed. His other two brothers, they were killed in the same battle. And then Saul was wounded. And Saul was wounded so bad, he looked for someone else to kill him. He was so dishonorable, he wanted somebody else to even kill him. And they couldn't find anyone. And the Bible says Saul fell upon his own sword. In other words, he committed suicide. I want you to know, I just gave you a prophecy of things that are soon to come. Don't fool yourself. God sees everything. And he is still on the throne. And he said he will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. And we need to realize that before God, 
this his people be destroyed and cut off from the face of the earth, God will destroy them and have them to kill their own selves. Amen. That's as far as I'm going to go. Stop the steal. God was not having David steal anything from Saul. Saul knew it was a lie. Saul knew from the start it was a lie. David didn't steal nothing from him. Only thing that that, uh, that Saul was upset about David is because it gave him more glory than him. Watch out for leaders who are intimidated by people giving anybody else more glory than them. They are the most critical and the most dangerous people on the face of the earth. And in due time, God is going to deal with them. If they don't change their heart and get right, God is going to deal with them the same way as he dealt with Saul. Amen. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Elder Brian Barrett, if you don't mind, sir, ending us with prayer this, uh, today. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we acknowledge you today as the head of our lives. And you are concerned about our well-being, our heart, our spirit, our minds. And today we give you the victory. And every time that we come and hear your word, Lord God, we get more grace. We get more peace. And we're able to call on your name. We can call on you in prayer and in supplications. You will be there. Help us to share our very gifts and talents today, oh God that you have given us for your glory, honor, and praise. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank each and every one of y'all for coming out today. I pray that you'll get a chance to, this tape will be out probably in about an hour. I pray you get a chance to go back and listen through it. Uh, take some notes. There's a lot that's in here, uh, but it, it deals with where we are today in society. Don't ever listen to all these. And when I say listen to, don't ever fret thyself because of evildoers. For the Bible says they soon shall be cut out or cut down like a blade of grass. So I do thank each and every one of you. So Celeste, it's so really good to have you with us today. Hey, um, Pastor Scott, I wanted to um to add to add to say something and just put it out um for everybody. But um a very, very close friend of mine, you know, gives me direction, um, corrects me. Um my my problem is I, I'm I'm feeling very apathetic to the point I don't care. You know, I well, well, let's do it like this, Sister Leslie, if you don't mind. Give me uh, contact me personally. So uh because we got people that they're gonna have to uh, get places and uh but contact me as a pastor and then I can listen to I don't, I don't mind you take as long as you want and tell me what the situation is and we'll do it like that. Because if I have everybody tell me what they're going through. I tell you, it's going to be a long time. So uh, I'll make sure that I get uh, a way of you contacting me, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. God bless you. And thank you again. Okay. Thank bye. You. Bye bye. We thank God for Sister Lorelai, uh, Sister Jaden. Good to see you again. Uh, Brother Philip, God bless you. So good to see you. I saw that you came on yesterday, and uh, it's good to see you again today. Uh, Brother Carlos, Brother Gabriel, God bless you all and each and every one of you. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, uh, Elder Angel Bear, make sure that I get a way we can contact uh, Sister Leslie. Okay? All right, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.